already. So we are not going. There is no need uh, for any uh, additional financing or anything like that. As a result, once we receive this uh, agree approval from shareholders' meeting, then this deal will be completed without any uh, other questions. So shareholders' meeting and also uh, you English court approval will be necessary. And the uh, transaction uh, structure is scheme of arrangement. And the schedule, today is an announcement, July 18th, and also scheme uh, documents posted after uh, this announcement in a few weeks. And later on, after a few weeks later, we will present the petition for sanction of scheme uh, to court and also the shareholders meeting and all the uh, petition for sanctions of scheme will be made and the scheme will be, uh, becomes effective a few days after that. So total process we are looking at uh, in a few months. So it's not like six months or a year or anything like that. We are not expecting that long uh, process. And the uh, transaction rationale here um, has a unique and foundational technology. And in this industry, uh, ARM is number one in the world. And the market potential is huge. And uh, we're expecting the uh, future growth, especially in the mobile and the automobile or consumer electronics are already using, and that's another chance that we are looking at. And for the for our long vision, uh, really matches uh, to this company. And for SoftBank stakeholders, like I mentioned earlier, we do not do any equity financing for or use for this transaction at all. And also, no change in SoftBank uh, dividend policy. And also, maintain flexible flexibilities with continued focus on net debt reduction, especially the net debt over EBITDA uh, multiple is going to be improved. I thought this is a kind of a fate and uh, very decisions that uh, which has been determined because Back in uh, 1976, 40 years ago, even before I found the SoftBank, when I was year of 19, I saw uh, one picture. This is it. This is a real picture of the, uh, the thing that I saw when I was 19 years old. So I get up from the car. I remember the scene exactly. And that's the time where that I was still college student. I got up from the car, and I there are lots of leaves on the ground, and I stepping on those leaves. And actually, I was also walking and reading a science magazine, and I flipping the pages, and one of the pages shows this photo, and I was wondering what's this. This was the first time I saw this. Looks like a design for the future metropolitan or anything like that. And uh, I was just wondered, what is what was it? And I was wondered and flipped to the next page. And then I found out uh, this is actually the finger size computer. That's the first time I, I learned about it, which is the chip. This is the expansion of the chip. And I saw this, and actually I was shaking my hands and legs, and I was so uh, moved, and I st couldn't stop crying. It was just a one instance. I just got off, and I was walking along the road just in a second that actually my head was actually moving around, and I st couldn't stop crying. It was like... A it's like I just saw the moving picture, moving movie or music. So you too much moved, and you just couldn't stop your shaking, and you couldn't stop crying. Exactly the same thing happens to me when I saw this photo. Why? Because 
I finally think this is something that exceeds the brains of human being in the future. So this is a thing that going to exceed. Human actually created by themselves to exceed the human's brain. So that's this is something in the future. Once that it's evolved, then this is going to be the tremendous impact to the future of the human beings. Later on, it's going to exceed the brain's functions of human being. And I thought about that at that moment, and I scared, and also moved and excited. Everything happens in the same time. And that made me not being able to stop crying. So that chip photo here, actually, today, now that the we, my, myself, can be involved largely to the future of human being. And I was able to make such a decision. The computer chip in the worldwide is shipped to so many numbers, but PC, inside of PC CPU, most of them are made by Intel. But other than PC, those CPUs other than PC almost are, are made by ARM. So outside of PC, when many of things is going to be connected to Internet, which is so-called Internet of Things uh, era is coming, and the center of this trend is now in ARM. And uh, being involved in ARM, and when I was in 19 years old, this is the, the chip photo of microcomputer. And 40 years later now that I am actually directly involved in this business. So I'm so excited because of that. And that made me, I don't know what to put it into the words. So from that sense, as a, an a, a businessman or my personal life-wise, this is the highlight of my life. And today is the day for that. That's how I think about it. So what the, such a, we can be together with uh, you. And I'm so happy that uh, we are all together in this room. I am so happy. So I hope you're also happy too. And uh, you can be in the same room as the happiest person in, in my life here. Uh, but that's maybe too exaggerating. But anyway, but that's how happy I am. And I wanted to share with you. So SoftBank here actually return to investment is 44%. So for uh, 18 years, every year compound 44% uh, of IRR has been recorded. And uh, if I need to pick only one thing for the key for success, then I would say I always try to focus on the paradigm shift of the technology. Every five years uh, or every 10 years, there is a paradigm shift and try to be focused on the very beginning of those change. And I made a bit, big bit every uh, uh, entrance or every beginning of those paradigm shift. And that make us uh, the, this 44% of the IRR. So 44% return, I want you to think about it. In the worldwide private equity investment companies, venture capitals around the world, but with this size, so much trillion yen, 44% of IIR, and have a such track record. I have never seen such a company as far as I know. I never saw such a company in the world. And only key for success is the beginning of paradigm shift that I made a bit every time. So in the past 40 years, there are four big paradigm shift has occurred. And every 10 years or so, I made a, a big bet in the beginning of those. And why arm now? So that's because 
I am expecting the one of the biggest paradigm shift that coming in human being history, which is from mobile internet to the IoT. Because they do be the Internet of Things. PC, uh, PC became PC Internet, next became mobile, became Internet, and after the mobile, it will be the Internet of Things. Everything will be connected to Internet. The first it was PC, then mobile. In the future, every single thing will be connected to the PC, uh, the computer. So this is the biggest paradigm shift we will see in the future. That's my, that is my belief. Therefore, at that entrance, I would like to make an investment. Probably for many people, when, when the Internet began its life, they didn't know what Internet was. So they were skeptical, probably. However, SoftBank invested proactively to that. When mobile technology advanced, we, when, we went, when, when we bought Vodafone Japan, people thought, why were they buying into a very mature market, this Fiji's mobile industry? Uh, then I said, because I wasn't investing in the mature mobile market, I was I was investing in mobile internet, and I was investing at the entrance, the beginning of that market. That's what, that's what I said. However, many people didn't understand what I was saying. Therefore, the share price of, the soft, of our company, SoftBank, after that rumor came out, in two weeks, uh, we had a, saw a drop of share price of 60 percent, but that's because many people are skeptical, even thinking that we would go bankrupt. Because we, that, but we didn't, we didn't need all that money. Three trillion yen, if we went to bankrupt. But. But we had more cash and more assets than that, and we could just manage just with cash, cash in hand. So the key is that we invested at the entrance of a paradigm shift. So let us talk about the company Arm. I will explain to people who don't know about Arm just briefly. Arm is a company. So they have they, they last year they shipped 15 billion units of chips. This is the number is based on the design base. Arm designed chips of this number, and the, this number of chips were shipped. They don't manufacture chips themselves. Intel do both. They design and manufacture. However, Arm's business model is not to do both. They are specialized in designing uh, chips. And they ask manufacturers of chips to make make their chips. So this is called system on chips. So you, they can add a memory or just modem, add modems or gra uh, they can enhance graphics. Then they, this thing is is called system on chips. And so these are customized chips. It's like. Motherboard of 20, 30 years ago, uh, PC's motherboard, it is just like that. So uh, in the motherboards of those days has shrunk into the size of a chip. So ARM has, is, um, has, is offering this desi these designs to many manufacturers of chips. And last year, 15 billion units were uh, shipped and it is exponentially growing. So in 30 years, how many multiple would they be shipping? So this is the total revenue. So this is a uh, 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 less. It's less than 1.5 billion last year, and this is a profit, a net uh, profit of the tax. This is uh, uh, about six. Six hundred sixty-one million dollars. But as far as I'm concerned, this is just the entrance of uh, Arm's exponential growth. Arm has uh, Arm Arm's chips are used in many smartphones all over the world. They occupy about ninety-seven percent 
uh, of uh, the chips uh, used in my mobile phones. Therefore, smartphones, excuse me. So you could say ARM is the biggest company in smartphone chips industry. So the shipment of s smartphone has begun to mature, but uh, but their p potential for more growth it, it lies in the fact that uh, one device can use multiple chips and the most important uh, application processor has has not just one core has multiple cores arm first used one core in cpu but now it has four cores or uh, eight cores even in and furthermore, and graphics and other enhancement can be added and growing in numbers. And in a mode automobile, so there will be more and more ARM-based chips. So when the car becomes all uh, self-driving, uh, the, the, there will be more self-driving cars. In that case, car, more automobiles will become running super super computers or running robots if that happens arms potential market value will be even more in enhanced and furthermore in homes and offices everything anything will be connected in the future to the internet so what's the most important if that is realized is the security if a hacker uh, hacks uh, via the internet of things for example a car a self-driving car provided that is hacked and it, it had suffered virus attacks so that means on the day, on the t on, at the same time, all over the world, all the brakes, car brakes, stops working. That can happen if a bad hacker does things like this. So if the security is not enough, this can happen. So if you think the terrorist, which is prevalent all over the world right now, so it can be a man-made terrorist or self-blowing up. Sometimes a terrorist the act of terrorism can be committed just by hacking. That's, that's a, that is a possibility. So by hackers, uh, airplanes can crash, and multi multiple airplanes or multiple cars can crash or their brakes stop working. So this is a very dangerous world we could have. Therefore, the security issues will become the most important element. However, ARM has got, has got a security zone system. Um, there their uh, security, uh, their royalty percentage is also growing very fast because it has uh, the uh, multiple cores have begun being used. So this page shows all the ma many elements of ARM, this com company ARM. Please have a look later. If you look at, read it closely, you will realize that the arm has begun to become the core of the cause of this industry. So, so last year, it, as I said, 15 billion units were shipped last year. But by 2020, this number will quadruple or even become five times more. That is expected. So this is a gross market, uh, and other there are there are other gross markets. So mobile doesn't mean just smartphones; it includes not PCs and everything. That's the this figure is 80 percent includes all the not PCs and everything. If excluding this PC uh, not PCs, its share is 97 percent, and other in other areas. Embedded intelligence and infra 
infrastructure, all those things have begun to use ARMS products. By 2020, the potential market, the ARM design based chips, the size of the potential market is, is, is uh, considered to be 45 billion, or in the uh, enterprise infrastructure, 36 billion. So, this is a huge market with huge potential. And others uh, will be also used for other home appliances and other things. ARM's business model isn't to manufacture chips themselves. Therefore, so they they give their they license out the, their chip design to many manufacturers of chips. Then they ask uh, manufacturers like TMS, uh, other companies ask other companies to make manufacture their own chips. So they are not competing with chip manufacturers. Rather, they are partners of chip manufacturers. So they just offer license out their chip designs. That's the difference uh, with Intel. Intel does both uh, designing and man manufacturing. So it's not a vertical in integration, but it's a, a segmentation. By segmenting, segmenting their roles, they have earned many partners. This is their business model. And this is very, very similar to our business model. So these software partners and other design partners, so they have more than 1,000 partners. So to, uh, this investment is based on the shared vision between SoftBank and ARM. And also, we will we'll maintain neutrality and we'll build a global, global relationships and invest in innovation. In one word, SoftBank and ARM faced with the paradigm shift, the next paradigm shift, we will be challenging together to this beginning of the next big paradigm shift. So the ARM is already the industry standard, but they also have a huge growth potential, especially IoT. IoT is going to be the biggest paradigm shift of all things coming. Therefore, the top management and the board, uh, board meetings have unanimously such are going to suggest to the shareholders. They have agreed to suggest this deal to all the shareholders. So I have, I hope I didn't talk too much. I just hope as many people as possible will understand my vision. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, yes, the floor is opened to the questions. So uh, let's, let's, um, Let's get questions from the people actually in this uh, meeting room. Yes, please. World Business Satellite TV Tokyo. So in the previous session in English, uh, the, the Brexit or the pond uh, starting uh, depreciation is not really directly involved into this transaction. But the uh, 136 yen per uh, pound is a very much uh, discounted rate. Uh, for the transaction, so that the uh, uh, starting depreciation, how much do you think you'll be able to buy this uh, company is uh, discounted? And also, oh, ARM does not have any functions for the uh, productions, so even that the UK Brexit uh, exit from the euro, oh, but did you have a hypothesis that it's not going to be any impact to the ARM uh, for your decision making? Brexit this time. In my dis process of decision making for this transaction, there is even 0.1% in my mind about this Brexit for this transaction. After this Brexit, Brexit pound, uh, the currency discounts are happening, but at the same time, um, share price in pounds 15% uh, increased. 
So in the course of Brexit, looking at the major companies, um, is one of the extraordinary company that increasing the share price by 15 percent. So currency in, uh, change and the share price increase uh, net net. Actually, in that point of view, there is no discount at all and no increase of price at all. So it was neutral. Therefore, Brexit currency change didn't give me any impact to my decisions on arm transaction. And the currency uh, yen appreciation is also giving Japanese companies to acquire the company. But how did you think is a discount that you'd be able to gain from this time? So like I said, there is no discount at all. It was neutral. Pounds are starting. How much percent starting discounted after the Brexit? By about 15 percent or so. So starting about 15 percent cheaper. Um, share price increased 15 percent. So net net, it's about flat. So for us, currency didn't really give us any change. Just about paradigm shift uh, from IoT. It's the not timing is now, and that's why we came to this conclusion. And if I need to add one more words, before then, SoftBank didn't have enough money to do this. It's happened to be because uh, we have uh, uh, proceeds from the sales of Alibaba shares, partial uh, sales, also kept uh, sales of supercell shares. So those decision making were made, uh, and therefore they gave us uh, enough sufficient money on our hand, and that was the timing where that we came to this. So how about the production base? No production base. Brexit could affect. Uh, no, not any uh, effect to positive but the, or negatively. Next question, please. I am Ebitani from Nikkei Business. So probably opposite from the previous question. So this transaction amount, I'm thinking it may be too expensive. How can you answer that? And also the other things, by having this transaction with them, any other operators as a customer for ARM or transaction clients may be impacted from this transaction? ARM um, for SoftBank is 3.3 trillion yen. Comparing the uh, history, the, it's the biggest amount of the transaction. And also, we have put it 43% uh, of premium on top of the uh, valuations on the equity market, which could be expensive. You can say interpreted in expensive, but that's the multiple from the previous profit or the premium for the previous profit. So it's not the future profit to be gained or any potentials for the future five years later or 10 years later. When you look back, then uh, you may, from the five years later or 10 years later, to look at the present value, I think it is reasonable enough. And that's people will understand in the uh, uh, future. Ten years before that when we decide to purchase a Vodafone KK, which was uh, cost us about two trillion yen, and many people said that was very expensive. But now when you look back, it was very cheap and reasonable or transaction. Same thing applies to this. Ten years later, people would say it was very reasonable transaction. That's how I think, and that's how I p people would think. Any objection for internally? Internally, in, uh, in our company, whenever when we make a big decisions, big investment, almost people all object. When I say I uh, do the Alibaba investment, the Vodafone investment, whenever when you have a big project, the first, in the very beginning, most of people object. That's when you look at the 35 years history of SoftBank, that always happens that way. However, when we discuss and argue, and uh, when we go into more details of the transaction uh, process, 
almost all the people come to the fall of the project. project. That's because I'm so fully passionate and negotiate, or the, sometimes that people convinced, sometimes he's so passionate so that we have to follow, we have to accept. That's, uh, there are several cases uh, of those in the internal discussion, but uh, at least this time, as of today, SoftBank uh, management are for, all for and all excited about this transaction. And for your reference, board meeting of SoftBank, Mr. Yanai, whenever I make an investment or whenever I make a decision making, he's all, all, all usually make an objection. But at the time of Vodafone KK, he said we should go for it. And he was for the project. And this time for the arm transaction, he told me we should go for it. Uh, so that he was very much supportive on this decision. For Alibaba Jack Ma, uh, that uh, he was also very supportive on this. Uh, so that uh, this time, as of today, we are unanimously uh, con approved. So Mr. Nikesh Arora, who left the management, how did he think about and was he involved in this decision? He wasn't involved in the final discussion because the final decision was made in two weeks. In the very beginning, when we officially approached to uh, arm was two weeks ago. That was the first time at Turkey when the terror uh, uh, activity was happening and also the coup d'etat happens. So in the middle of those two big uh, incident, um, chairman was cruising at uh, Turkey. He was at the uh, Mediterranean Sea and made a phone call to him. I wanted to see him. And then why don't you come to the closest port? And he stopped by at the port, which was a mammoth of Turkey. The uh, the port uh, city at the restaurant, he and myself uh, met each other. That was the first time I made an uh, approach. So in uh, these two weeks, we made the official approach in the due diligence uh, and also the negotiation was made. So from the sense, that was after Nikesh left the uh, company. Before then, we have a big picture discussion what's going on a little bit, but we made up our decision was within these two weeks. I have another question about the impact to the clients of ARM. SoftBank so far never produced chipset, never purchased chipset, a chip. Uh, so that from that sense, ARM clients are all chip uh, productions. So we don't have any conflict of interest with those clients of ARM. So from that sense, I think we are completely neutral from that sense. Next person, please. I am Teranishi from Asahi newspaper. So we don't have a, um, a person from ARM. Um, so I understand this is very attractive company. And uh, but uh, that, what was the reason that ARM um, decides SoftBank as a partner? Have you heard about it fr uh, from ARM um people? And another thing. Uh, you said that you met with Chancellor, but how about uh, Prime Minister uh, Miss May? That did you have a meeting with her? Uh, for um, there are several stakeholders. There have existing shareholders. They have a senior management, and also um, clients. So there are several types of stakeholder of um. For shareholders, this is a cash offer in a sufficient uh, premium so that uh, at the shareholders meeting of um, uh, for existing shareholder, they're going to vote. Then they will uh, express their uh, intention or decisions, which we need to wait to see uh, until they vote. For shareholders, board of um, recommend and the board of ARM um, unanimously yeah, approved and support this offer and recommend to the shareholders. <clears throat> so which means uh, they can also benefit uh, shareholders. 
uh, and that is the offer from us. And next stakeholder, which is the management of ARM. For um, this has been the listed company, and they had to be more aggressive uh, to hire engineers or the R&D uh, for the dawn of the IoT. And they uh, uh, wanted to do so, or s do some investment into that. But because it's this company, they have to focus on the bottom line as well. Uh, therefore, they couldn't have enough opportunity to make an investment aggressively to those areas. But once they became unlisted and 100% privatized, then in the coming few years, they will be able to make an investment without hesitation and be more aggressive about the investment. Therefore, management is happy about that so that they don't have to uh, answer for those questions from institutional investors regarding a profit of decent terms. But uh, this time, that they will be, we'll be able to support the long-term period as a long-term investor. So they welcome that idea. And also from the employee's point of view, which I will meet first time uh, this afternoon at the Cambridge uh, headquarter of um, and uh, uh, first time I meet with uh, management of ARM, but for them, in coming five years, we express our intention to double the headcounts and officially commit that, which will be legally binding. Uh, that's something that we're trying to proceed going forward, which means for engineers, it's going to be more and more in the company, and that's going to be committed, meaning for them, they will be able to make uh, enough advanced investment into engineers and so on, which I believe is going to be welcomed by them too. And from the client's point of view, we will be maintained as a neutral positions and make an investment to the technologies and the R&D so that for clients of chip, chip uh, manufacturers and also the end users wise, I believe for those uh, Concerned parties will be able to provide the new technology and will be able to contribute to them. And for the Mr. Hammond, uh, Chancellor of Exchequer, that we had a face-to-face -face meeting this morning and last night, when I before right before I flew uh, to here, I made a phone uh, session and also right before then we had a chance to have a phone call with Prime Minister Ms. May. And both. recognize this as aggressive investment into UK and also enhance the uh, employment uh, and the brand of arm and headquarters maintained in UK and the same uh, existing organization is going to be maintained will also be seen as a, a very strong commitment to UK and they welcome that idea. That's what I heard from them. Uh, therefore, I believe this is very much welcomed. A transaction. Next person, please. I am Kida from Nikkei newspaper. So with your press release, you en en express the um, investment into UK. But the arm itself actually creating a design center or so a, a branch in San Jose and so on. And the customers are actually located in Asia or Silicon Valley. So uh, how do you think about investment into those areas? And also the second question, what was the opportunity? What, what triggers you to start considering this transaction? Did you, because of the cash that the you'll be receiving? so that you'll be able to finally make this uh, transaction uh, happening? Or was it arm um, that they're looking for the partner? Is there any trigger to have these transactions from those two parties? Any incidents or anything that happens to make you come to this uh, transaction? So trigger, we didn't receive any approach from us, but we made an approach to arm. Um, so it was a kind of a one-way communication from us a proposal. And about 10 years ago, I had a very strong interest over um, someday, 
someday in the future, when we have a cash uh, flexibility, then I would like to have ARM um, as one of our SoftBank Group members. So I have a big picture uh, ambitious. And I kept having such a dream over 10 years or so. iPhone, Android phones, inside of those phones actually have an ARM products. In the very beginning of the iPhone products, ARM-based designed chip was embedded. So that's why I knew and learned that the ARM is going to be the key leader for the mobile internet, and I'm convinced from that, uh, from then. And also, Android has an operating system which is capable for the ARM design chip. So those two actually adapting their smartphone uh, with the uh, ARM-based design, meaning that the mobile internet era or the mobile uh, phone era is going to be mainly consist of ARM. So that's something that I'm convinced uh, 10 years ago already. And it, it's, I, I, we haven't spent 10 years since we start having iPhone, but when I met with Steve before the launch of iPhone, so when I, uh, right before I uh, acquired Vodafone KK, and uh, when at that time uh, that I met with Steve Jobs and uh, uh, mobile internet uh, things is uh, something that I already convinced. And Nintendo has already been using the ARM-based chip uh, so that we've been thinking about this for a long, long time. But the latest trigger was the cash proceeds that are coming to us. We have enough money with us uh, and prepared. That became uh, recently available. And also, oh, mobile internet uh, trend uh, is another reason why that uh, we came to this conclusion. What was your previous question? Sorry. Other than UK, do you have an op do you have any intention to make an investment? So ARM um, has about four thousand employees, and half of that, it's about thousand six hundred employees are located in UK. Especially engineers are located in UK. Therefore. The biggest group of UK uh, engineers are in UK, so we would like to enhance that part. That's the uh, b best way to do so. But I am already have uh, uh, Austin, China, Silicon Valley, those areas, or Taiwan. They have a, a development center in those areas as well. So that's that that we would like to also enhance. But uh, it, because it, it does not mean that we double the uh, UK so that we can decrease the other base, but we would like to increase in total so that uh, we don't decrease the other countries, but in total we would like to enhance and increase engineers of ARM, but especially our focus is on uh, UK engineer space. Any other questions? If not, then that uh, we would like to start taking questions from the uh, phone calls. So anybody on the phone, uh, please uh, press star one for questions, and uh, we will let you know uh, using the guidance. Whenever you make a question, please state your name and affiliation. Thank you. So now that uh, we would like to start uh, accepting your questions over the phone. I'm Takeuchi from Nikkei newspaper. One confirmation, two questions, please. Bridge loan, when you explained about bridge loan, so you have a process from super sales, share sales, and the gun horse uh, share sales coming in next month, so that's why it's structured bridge. That means this bridge loan is going to be repaid using those proceeds. So gross debt for this transaction uh, will not increase then. And another thing, you made recently that you are going to also focus on the financial KPI as well. But net 
interest bearing debt was I believe that's one of the important KPI for your business. So multiple for net debt over EBITDA. At AGM, it was about three times. It has been improved to three times. But what is the level you think as the appropriate net debt over EBITDA ratio? So those are the two questions I have. Bridge on this time. So proceeds from Supercell share sales and uh, uh, Gangho share sales is coming on next month. So most of the bridge loan will be repaid with those uh, to a certain extent. But at the same time, we do uh, need to keep some flexibilities on cash so that uh, net debt wise, we uh, not expecting to change too much. And then, from the first place, our ratio of EBITDA multiple of the debt, some people say it's high, but if you think about it, I myself think it's virtually zero, the net debt ratio, because the are the listed shares, the number of li listed shares. If you think about the scale of the shares we hold, it's seven, eight, seven or eight trillion yen. If you consider this scale, this, uh, con and consider the net direct net debt. Uh, that means uh, we'll make the net the amount of net de net debt zero. In addition to that, EBITDA uh, it has about um, uh, over 2 trillion yen every year. So that means we have enough free cash flow. So if you take that into consideration, uh, as far as I'm concerned, practically, we have a single A or double A standard, or well, international standard, uh, judged by uh, Japanese uh, rating agencies. Uh, we are given already given single A, but even in international standard, we have high rating, uh, and also we have such such um, plenty of free cash. There, there aren't any other companies like this. Therefore, if you look at our balance sheet, you can tell we are a very financially healthy company. So I expect the free cash flow to in keep in increasing, especially the spend cash. We've been, uh, we have kept uh, in, we were in, a, in deficit for a long time. But, but uh, for the first time, spirit turned into the black uh, uh, at EBIT figure. Therefore, I think we have come one step ahead. So if you look at uh, superficial gross debt, and if you think about the multiple of EBITDA, it will just keep improving. That's my opinion. Have I answered your question? Thank you. Any other questions? I, I'm your mother from Toyo Keizai. How about uh, goodwill? So, at the, so there was 1.6 trillion yen of goodwill at the end of March. So that was 25.2 billion yen, and you have uh, you have a three about three trillion yen burden. So as a soft soft bank group, that is beyond the net asset. That's the first question. 
the scale of the goodwill is quite large at this deal. But good uh, goodwill means the value of that company, if the value of the company sharply decreases, of course we have to uh, uh, have to write off or depreciate the goodwill. But but in over the last ten years, the net arm has been uh, has been increasing their net profit smoothly. Every year they increased it. Uh, the difference uh, with Sprint is arm has been in the black and also their net profit has been increasing. So net, of course uh, we have to depreciate. Uh, we don't have the risk of having to decrease the goodwill. That means arm It's, it, we are not buying a physical company. We are buying the ability of ARM to design chips and the potential to keep producing values and to, to keep creating new technology every year. We are buying this platform. This is the core value of this company, ARM. So. It, so if you think about Facebook or Amazon or Google, they don't have big assets. However, they are n number one in each section, each category. And if, if they are in that position, they have the potential to keep growing. And the market cap, if you think about the market capital, within that, they don't have a net, a net capital. Most of it is a goodwill. So this, we can say a very similar thing here too. So the when you announced the buyback of uh, 200 billion yen, uh, you talked that uh, you are going to use the proceeds from the sales uh, divest. And I thought that's about the Alibaba share uh, sales. But with this transaction, this 500 billion yen share buyback as, uh, needs to be cared still. So are you going to keep uh, selling the sh assets so that you'll be able to pay for this share buyback? Now looking at the past 10 years or 20 years, for example, SoftBank has been making uh, a sales disposals or new investment time to time. So it's kind of the uh, repeated repetitive uh, activities that we've been doing. So that's something uh, you expect some disposals, sometimes uh, investments. So we need to take a balance to do such an activity in between those two. We don't, we are not forced to sell anything right now. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, net interest bearing debt over EBITDA multiple. I believe this is very healthy level at this moment. Therefore, share buyback is going to be used from the sales dis divesting, a share uh, asset divesting, and also a cash on hand, and uh, some uh, proceeds from the share sales, including Alibaba and Supercell, including Ali, uh, Gangho as well. And that is going to be used uh, for the majority of the, the uh, fun, uh, fi funds. The confirmation, that's uh, confirmation. So because we have a 2 trillion yen, so that's why that you did 3.3 trillion. Or is it because 3.23 trillion yen, so that you uh, raised 2, 2 trillion yen, which is uh, the order, uh, both way, I believe, it's, which is fast uh, first. Well, it's both way. Thank you very much. That's it. Any other questions? Is that all? Can you wait a second, please? 
Can you hear me? Yeah, uh, this is Asahi newspaper. Two, two questions. A, a, uh, ALM's value, uh, arm, well, well, the value of arm has been explained very well. But the synergy with SoftBank's energy, uh, I would like to hear more about that. That's the first question. The second question is that there was a shareholders meeting the other day. And then, so you, you said that by 2040, everybody has 1,000 devices connected to internet. But if AOC is, is going to be realized, are you thinking of 2040, year 2040, or before that? And when the time comes, so um, how, much, how important will um, will have become for your company, to your company? Yes, the first the synergy. SoftBank it offers infrastructure for the internet, and the ARMS products will be used for internet of things. So it means everything will be using ARM products. When the internet is connected to everything, that means that the, everything will be using infrastructure of internet. So when things have been connected to the internet and then our our infrastructure the combination of our structure and the arms tip are connected based on the mutual trust and arm uh, it doesn't only do the designing of chips they also offer security systems and other things so this service department and our group's service department can create some kind of synergy in the future. It could have happen. We haven't had any, we haven't um, drawn up any concrete business model or anything. It's just, um, it's possible in the future that we are at that kind of stages. So. As I, I, as I have been saying, the paradigm shift, uh, we, we are always investing at the entrance of a paradigm shift. When, when, we, we, when we invested to the internet at the paradigm shift, the existing e technology and the internet, uh, the, how much synergy was to be created was very much doubted by many people. But then, then, Internet shifted to mobile, and then we were buying mobile companies, and people said, what kind of synergy will be created by buying mobile company? So no, uh, nobody, 90% of the people I talked to didn't understand it. But to this time, this is a paradigm shift, another paradigm shift. This is not a continuous thing. It's a huge jump, big jump. So I, I, it's, it's difficult to tell that how much direct synergy will be created. But looking back in the future, it, I'm sure it will be seen as a very rational in investment. In total, I think we can give, we can create synergy in total. But in, in monetary terms, I can't really say anything about it. So synergy is there, but it won't be apparent immediately. But for, the, for over long term, of course, it's there. That's synergy. That is the answer for synergy. Another question was, what was it? Uh, it's, it's IoT. So if an, if an IoT has become prevalent and uh, what would the, the positioning of arm for you it's not all or nothing it's an incremental uh, more and more uh, expanding thing for example uh, if you think about personal computers at uh, the beginning of the internet pc so look, looking forward three years from now, five years now, many more things will be connected to the internet. Already now, P 
PCs are connected to the internet, smartphones are connected to the internet, even cars, are, some of the cars are connected to, or some of the household appliances are connected, connected to the internet. So, but the oncoming era of IoT compared to the future, now only three or two, two or three percent of things are connected. So this percentage will exp expand exponentially. So uh, at the moment, and only a few percent of the things are connected to the internet now. But in 30 years, one person, one, so on average, uh, 1,000 items will have been connected per head to the internet. For example, like the the lamp post on the road will be connected to the internet, the, uh, the lamps on the street or the, in the town, everything will have been connected to the internet, industrial equipment, jet engines, car engines, everything will be connected to the internet. In 30 years, a huge amount of things will have been connected, connected but it's not a sudden thing. It will be, um, it will be just an uh, increased number will increase exponentially. So due to the voice quality, when you ask for a question, would you please disconnect live streaming and make a question? Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Can you hear me okay? Yes. I am Sugimoto from Nikkei newspaper. I have two questions. One, so you mentioned about the beginning of paradigm shift that you've been making a big bet. And this is the another beginning of paradigm shift and you made this decision of transaction. In the past, when you think about the mobile internet or broadband, when you entered into this market, it was not investing but it was just the operating asset. You may himself involved directly to the management, but this time you are, uh, are you going to, is it going to be investment asset? And why you are not directly involved into the operations of the company if you are bit making a bit biggest bit in, the, in your lifetime. And the second question is about the uh, chip and the infrastructure uh, that going to be generating a synergy e each other. So IoT business, I believe, is going to be the next big agenda for SoftBank growth. And in the course of generating a synergy, what kind of things do you need to do? Is it the margin acquisition? Or is it the uh, any cooperation with the existing business of SoftBank and ARM? What is the specific examples you think is going to be required to generate synergies? In principle, it's not the situation where that I need to turn around the business of ARM or anything like that. At the time of Vodafone KK, it was a sinking ship. And broadband, we started from the scratch. Sprint, it was making a big loss and having a suffered a dot. So I myself needed to involve almost every day basis and even for the daily operation, I need to say a things and turn around the business or actually recreate the business or the company itself. But this time, fortunate to say that it has already been uh, number one positions uh, other than PC areas, making money, it's profitable, management is so skilled and talented, they are so successful company so that uh, I don't have to be involved into the daily operation of this business. 
and not creating any new or turning around the business, anything like that. That's not the case for this time. However, mid to long term strategy, I do like to deeply discuss, uh, discuss with the uh, senior management of BAP, and uh, we would like to come up with the strategy and vision for the mid to long term period. And under such a discussion, I would like to support them and also or encourage them. And uh, also like to endorse the uh, aggressive investment for the future. And uh, as a new business model, anything that the new functions or new features, there may be some uh, of those. So any additional new features, functions, I do like to be involved in such an idea. For example, at the time of Alibaba, we, I did the same. Jack Ma, who is a very talented uh, leader, and there are so many uh, senior management who support him, was there already. And they are uh, already running the very good B2B business. And there we came to join as a major shareholder and support them. Uh, since then, after three years later, B2C and C2C Taobao oh, should be launched. And that's why I myself uh, personally involved and make a proposal to Jack Ma and his team. Also made uh, uh, financial support on that too. So that when it comes to mid to long term uh, strategy, I deeply involved in the discussion. So the uh, success of today's Alibaba is very happy example. And uh, we SoftBank not only financial support, but also provide the strategic support. We would like to be involved in such a strategic discussion. So same thing applies to ARM um, this time for the uh, financial support for the future growth. In, on top of that, we will also like to provide the uh, long-term strategy discussion and I like to, together with management of ARM, that I would like to be involved in such a discussion and make that happen. So for my life, this is one of the most exciting announcements today, and that's because uh, I would like to be involved in such a discussion going forward. Any other questions? I am Ishikawa Freelance. So you talk about singularity a lot. And this time, is this to accelerate singularity, or what's the purpose? I couldn't hear you well. What did you say? Singularity, I think. The discussion on singularity, I a little bit mentioned in my presentation when I was year of 19. I first saw the expansion uh, photo of a uh, chip. And that time, I already thought about singularity, time will come. I felt that, and also I, I started crying. I didn't know, and there is no such word singularity, but the mind concept of the uh, thinking is singularity. So oh, when I first encountered the photo of chip, I already knew singularity, time will come. And I was a strong believer of singularity. And now it is going to be really coming soon. So sometime in this century, especially in coming 10, 20 to 30 years, I believe we are encountering the situation where that the computer will exceed human being. And under such circumstance, ARM chip is going to be embedded into so many things and going to produce the huge big data. And this big data will provide data to artificial intelligence. And those data supplied from big data is going to be make AI smarter and uh, um, 
most important key for that is going to be a, a chip from ARM. That's how I think. Thank you. Next question, please. Yes, please. I am Oshka from Asahi newspaper. So it's difficult to see the synergy right away. But so Bank, Sprint, Alibaba, you have a lot of operating assets. So you don't have any specific synergy came from this transaction with them right away. I said it's invisible. But actually, it also relates to everything. More specifically, today, this morning, I just received a phone call from Jack Ma of Alibaba by himself. And in China, Alibaba would like to become the partner of Bam. And as a partner of ARM, uh, that Alibaba would like to consider that in China. So he was also very passionate to, and made a phone call to me. Because ARM, um, even for Alibaba, Alibaba became already providing an operating system for smartphone in China, and Alibaba is making a rapid growth of those areas. And also they provide AliCloud and AliPay. Uh, so AliCloud, AliPay, or a smartphone, those are all, all connected to internet, which is IoT. And even in payment or cloud, Everything is going to be relating to connecting to IoT. So anything that big data coming from IoT will be integrated into Ali Cloud. So that's the kind of, that could be the case in the future. We never know. That's going to be the discussion going forward. So it's the kind of one of the ideas. Same things could say in Japan or United States. SoftBank Group uh, also providing uh, various kinds of cloud service and also the internet uh, network service. So there are lots of direct synergies into our group companies, but we cannot put it into the numerical cause right away this year or next year. It's really difficult for me to put it into the numbers in a big number. But the three years later, five years or ten years later, when, when time goes by, then our group, in a various way, having arm in our group company, and it will become a core of the core of our business, and that's the kind of a situation that we are expecting. But um. There are lots of clients, not only SoftBank, and you mentioned that the position is going to be neutral. So it's not really prioritized SoftBank over other clients. It's not prioritized SoftBank over other clients, but for example, if Yahoo Japan, Yahoo Japan is not only providing to SoftBank their service, but uh, we can also develop a custom base all together or coming up with the uh, business model together. There are lots of synergies so that uh, as uh, independent uh, operations, but also we can expect indirect or directly uh, provide the synergies. So that uh, is going to be a base. And in coming 10, 20 years, I believe it's going to be even wider and wider. Uh, for example, Go, the Chinese chess, in your uh, Go game, those winners of that kind of game, when you stone of Go, if you, it's not always the winner set the stones right next to the uh, 
counterparts stone. That's the amateur way of playing game. Actually, you need to set the stone to the a little bit far away, and that in 50 steps later, 100 steps later, that's going to become a big power. That's going to give a big influence to the game overall. So you should have made that decision. That could be the case where that you'll be able to tell later on. So five years later, five, 10 years later, if I would have made that decision back then, then I would become this or that. So the SoftBank now, why we making we made a broadband back then? Because we already expecting that the mobile internet will, would come later on. It was not all of the sudden decision, but I always trying to see five, five steps later or seven steps later, uh, and that's uh, something that I would like to make an action every time. People would understand. People would not understand. Most of the people would not understand. I can I can understand that, but that's the kind of a case. SoftBank 2.0 that uh, you mentioned that the uh, Nikeshi was leading, but SoftBank 2.0 and this time transaction, how that relates to each other? SoftBank was been playing mainly in domestic and making an investment overseas time to time, but SoftBank 2.0 not putting a core in domestic, but actually putting a base on global and making an investment in global. That's a kind of a transition to SoftBank 2.0 from my understanding. Nikesh left the company, and there are lots of questions around that. His left leave. I couldn't hear you well, but Nikesh made a lot of uh, Nikesh's left of the company made a lot of questions. How do you think about that? Nikesh made, shared a lot of vision with me. And even after he left, I miss him even more these days. But uh, as you can tell from this transaction of um, I still like to be playing as a chairman CEO of SoftBank at least five years or 10 or 15 years. I don't still want to be passionate to run the company by myself. So I, uh, I have a strong passions on that and I feel even more on that. So under such a circumstance, Nikesh, I couldn't give, uh, transit my position to him right away. And because of me and my selfish uh, desires to being uh, a chairman CEO for more five years or 10 years to come, I couldn't let him wait in the meantime. And that's why. He himself wanted to see his own steps, next steps. So that's why we came to this management change. But for as long as vision-wise, we've been sharing a lot. And if he were here, decision on arm transaction, I believe that he is also uh, for this idea. So due to the time limitation. So we have uh, last three questions, and then we'd like to finish up the uh, meeting. And please keep your question to one. Thank you. So one question per person. Thank you. Uh, next person, please. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, my name is Amana. Yeah, I have one question. So, how, what are you going to do about the management of ARM? S SoftBank has hasn't been in, been involved with the manufacturing. 
uh, industries. So how are you going to manage the arm? But for, so how about your position? Are you going to be the uh, chairman or something else? Well, the management of arm, they are very capable people. I regard them very highly. So uh, I don't think it's necessary to change the management of arm. The current management team should be maintained right there. For myself, when the deal is concluded, after the deal is concluded, I'll, whether I'll be a chairman or I'll take some kind of position, I haven't decided about it, but at least for mid to long term strategy of arm is something I would like to be involved and support myself. Thank you. I understood. Thank you very much. Next person, please. My name is Ishina, a freelancer. One question. So arms business is going to be your company's core business, if that's the case. Arms tips clients. So are there, are there other chip makers and terminal terminus makers like Samsung? So your relationship with those companies within the mobile segment, is it, is it going to see any change? Well, ARM within the SoftBank group will become one of the core businesses. That's my, uh, but that's the way I'm thinking right now. So as I said, it's not going to produce lots of, uh, it, it's going to produce lots of direct and indirect synergy, but for clients, I would like to, we'd like to maintain neutrality. As I said, SoftBank doesn't make nor buy chips, and against chip manufacturers, we'd like to maintain our neutral position. SoftBank, we produce smartphones as a device using those chips. Uh, well, there are many companies like that all over the world, including Apple, Samsung, uh, Huawei, HPC, or Sharp, even Sony. All these uh, manufacturers, smartphone manufacturers, are using ARM's um, chips now. So those uh, final products of smart uh, smartphones is something we buy, and all the rival companies are also buying those. So the final products, <coughs> because uh, um, be, only because the arm has become one of a uh, part of our company, we are not going to make any difference. So towards arm, we will maintain neutrality. Uh, oh, so I'm sorry. Arm is going to maintain its neutrality in providing their chips, other uh, home appliances or cars. They will keep uh, providing chips neutrally to all other clients. Uh, next question is the last one. My name is Oshitani from JP Morgan. Hello. One question. By your company buying ARM, existing ARM clients and users of companies in licensing, do, do you think do you think they will turn against ARM's products because it's be it's it's going to be bought by your company? 
because it, be, be, they've been buying their products because ARM has been neutral. But when it becomes uh, comes under the umbrella of SoftBank, they will stop buying, do you think? I don't think so. Be that's because we, SoftBank, we, we are not competing. We are not in a competing business with ARM's clients. SoftBank, uh, well, um, um, ARM's clients include Apple's and Samsung, MediaTek, uh, NVIDIA, Lunasus, Freescale, NSP, Microchip. Those companies are not our rivals. We are not competing in any business. So if we are not in competition, Although they have become under um, uh, come under umbrella, these clients will not turn their back to ARM all of a sudden. They will not change their. I don't think they have a policy to change their suppliers. So only because they become a group member of SoftBank Group, I don't think their clients will. We will turn their backs to arms. I don't think it's possible. So you had no color as a carrier so far. So, but companies, so this company is no, it's not under any carrier's umbrella, but now, now they become your part part of your company. The smartphones manufacturers are not carriers. Chip manufacturers are not any. None of them are within uh, carrier groups. So manufacturer manufacturers of cars, chips. Or they're not none, none of the. They're not in a, a competing businesses. To us, so if if seen from a global carrier company. So that means, even if, you, keep you, uh, dealing with uh, handsets, that's no dis disadvantage to them. That's right. So if if carrier doesn't carriers don't want to buy smartphones using ARM's chips, that means they can't deal with iPhone, nor Samsung, Huawei, HPC. They will they would no longer use buy or use those mobile phones all over the world. So therefore, they cannot turn their backs to ARM's chips. So if our smartphones, if they think we don't, we shouldn't offer our, or they, I don't think they are thinking we should, we shouldn't offer our mobiles to other companies. Yes, I think our time is up. We would like to conclude this press meeting. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much.